Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're gonna to discuss something that I've struggled with, something a lot of young professionals try to learn to cope with but isn't talked about a lot. This is learning to get ahead in your career. So often, um, I'm gonna use myself as a perfect example here, you start off, brand new job out of grad school, you take on a ton of responsibility, you're nervous about that new job, you get the job, you work it for six months, and all of a sudden, you're not working for one director, you're working for three separate directors, you have projects going on everywhere, you're super busy, and you absolutely love it, but you're trying to figure out, like, why am I not getting promoted? Like, when you started into finance, specifically on like the banking side, you had like that Wall Street kind of vision, um, you kind of start thinking like, if you're working hard, you're getting a lot of results, you should be getting promoted quickly. And I know six months is a very short example, but then like a year lapses, and so that's kind of usually the first point where you're expecting this kind of promotion, you're thinking about it, and you think like, I've done a great job, everybody tells me they love me, I have great quality work, I do things quickly, I'm doing more than everyone else around me, and I'm still not promoted in a year. And then a lot of employees think, okay, like, I'm new, I wanna jump. So they typically jump to somewhere else like I did. You jump to another career, you're looking for more money, more title, uh, more responsibilities, more excitement, right? You have this enthusiasm in you, you have the academic training that a lot of people don't have, and you're just driven to get stuff done, and you should be the best because you're working the hardest and you're working the smartest. And yet, you stop and you start thinking, okay, well, this isn't really working out. I've already jumped to another company and now I'm working at this company, I wanna get promoted. And you work there for a year to two years, you're waiting and you're trying to figure out where's the jump, right? And yet this jump doesn't happen, it's not coming. And so I'm gonna talk about this and show you guys more or less on graphs and paper to show you how this isn't working and what you should be doing um, to be progressing your career every single day and showing you how to make progress and how to feel productive when you're working in general. All right, so the best thing to do is to be patient when you're looking at this career perspective. Um, this is hard, I think, for young people. This is hard, especially if you're just so driven. Basically believe that you deserve to be promoted. You deserve to be compensated more. Uh, it is confusing when you have employees who are carrying two, three times the amount of work as another employee, and yet you have an entire team of people that are working at like a tenth of your capacity, and it's frustrating. But I can tell you the number one thing is to be patient because it takes time to build relationships, to build trust with people, and staying within one company is beneficial in the sense that people will start to trust you, they'll start to know you. Uh, it's not just the you know bottom people on your team that are around you. Senior management will start learning who you are, but it takes time to get there. So the number one takeaway from this video should be be patient. But that being said, I wanna kind of show you guys my graphical interpretation of how this works and actually how you can continue to improve your career every day and not just on these one-off scenarios. So when you have this, right, you have, you have time, okay? And then you have, let's just say, career, success. So you have career success, and I'm not gonna even define this at this point because career success can be defined by a variety of factors, but let's say here at time zero, you have zero success as well because you just came out of grad school and you have no experience, okay? So you get this first job and time goes on and at time one, you end up with some success, so you're here. And really what happens is it seems like this. It seems like you get your job and you have some success. So you go up and then you go over and a year goes by. And let's say two years goes by and no promotion, but then on year three, you get promoted. So you get to year three and bam, you have this promotion. And then let's say it continues on and you have this period in here. We'll put dot, dot, dot. We'll say this is like, I don't know, five, 10 years or something. And you end up with years, 10, and let's say in this meantime, you've had steppers. And obviously as you get towards the top, a lot of times these are longer before you get a bump. And so year 10, you're kind of here. And then let's say like year 15, you're somewhere right here, okay? That's great. So this is kind of the paradigm I'm talking about where you don't really understand, you don't really get that career success, I guess, in your own opinion, and the fact that it seems like everything is like this stepper uh, kind of approach. 
Uh, it is non-linear essentially in the fact that it goes up, it stops, it goes over, it stops, it goes up, it stops. So they're like these blocks that are occurring and you only get this big jump in compensation responsibility typically when you have this. So this is more or less your work. So this is your work life. Uh, this is when promotions come in and this has to do with your title, okay? This is fine, you can't change this, you can't fix this. Yes, there was this connotation of meritocracy in Wall Street and if the best traders would get to the top. I'm not even talking about trading right now because a lot of those paradigms, a lot of those stories are things that are just that. They're just stories from the 80s and 90s. Uh, the stock markets have changed. I'm not a trader, but this applies to my situation in quantitative finance, doing quantitative research, risk management, validation, model development. Essentially, this is what most careers look like. Okay, so this sucks, you can't fix this, but the thing is, how do you actually fix this and make yourself better? So in this scenario, you should be focusing on this part-time. This is only part of your real world. You think this is 100%, but we're gonna show you another part. So this next chart looks a little bit more like this. Same scenario, you have T, but on this side, we could put career success. But what I wanna call this is I wanna call this value and more specifically, personal value, okay? So when you have all these promotions in this chart, you have these steppers, we sure hope that it's tied to your success, to your skills, to your abilities, but a lot of times that's just not the reality. You just get stuck in these dumb paradigms where companies make rules like they can't promote you unless you've been there for two years. Um, you can't move from a, you know, say an analyst to a vice president because you're supposed to go through analyst, two, three, four, whatever, and then you have to go through associate and then you hit vice president. I know, the system sucks. This is kind of how corporate America is in general. It does make sense in some ways why they do this, but the thing is, is don't let this define you. Okay, we're gonna look at career success, but more or less your personal value. Your personal value does tie to your work promotions, your title, um, your career satisfaction, your happiness, okay? And this is your personal value, but realistically, these are your skills, all right? So when you start this, let's say you start here. We'll just put this a unit of one at time zero. This is your grad school degree. In reality, this is equivalently how much skill you have from grad school. You think you're really smart, but it's really not worth that much. Uh, it's a great foundation, it helps you get ahead. I understand that, but trust me, life is going to get better. So most people, what they do is they wait for their employer to essentially promote them and push them forward and they wait for their company to pay for training and you know all this stuff and they end up in a similar pattern like this right, we just talked about something like that. And this person, we'll call this the average person, they're typically unsatisfied, they're complaining a lot, they don't like their job, things aren't working out. And I understand that, but the problem is, is you don't like this model and you're complaining this model sucks, but when you go to your skills, your personal value and how you should be viewing career success, you're still stuck in their mindset and you don't understand how the real world actually works. So you asked me, Dreyto, what do you do to make yourself better? Okay, you need to train yourself. When you have downtime at work, you should be working every single day. There should not be downtime in your day. And yes, it is nice to have a day or two where you're kind of relaxed and you're not mentally grinding out models and calculus and statistics and all these different processes. There's not team meetings and stress galore. I get it. But what you should be doing is your curve should look something like this. Okay, this curve are the above average people. These people are the people that are working hard. The thing is, is every single day if you're self-training, you're learning a little bit, you should be moving so that time one, you're slightly higher than you were at time zero. And then you should be moving yourself forward and you should have time two, and you should be going on and on and on until you get to some point where essentially this is time, I don't know, time 12. Let's say this is months, okay? And after 12 months, you should be here. This chart might coincide to the original chart, which we looked at, which was similar to like this, and then it had these steppers, right? But it should cross at these points somewhat, okay? And what really is happening is that these points, 
these are the points that the managers that are doing the promotions, the hiring, you know, this is really what people are looking for. And when I say this, it even goes above and beyond your average company. Because the thing is, is if you're working at a company and you put in a lot of work and you've been there a few years, you're not getting promoted, right? The thing is, this green graph will suck for you. You'll be flat and feel like you're not getting ahead at all in your career. And this essentially is what I like to view as the work that the company assigns you. You are assigned to do a specific task, a specific job, okay? Every single job you're gonna work for the most part, there are some exceptions, but most jobs have downtime. In your downtime, you should be self-training and you should be this blue line. You should be driving yourself to improve yourself every single day. Now, that being said, I have been highly, highly criticized in industry at multiple companies. Uh, people hate when I self-learn. I don't know what the deal is. Um, I have had jobs where you definitely have seasonal effects. So I've worked in C-Car, uh, where essentially you're slammed, you're working 60, 70 hours a week, and this happens for like three months, and then all of a sudden you're dead for a few months as C-Car's like, coming back and there's nothing new to do and you're waiting on other people to finish their process. People have been mad at me for self-learning in these situations. I don't know why, I think it's dumb. Uh, I also worked as a consultant for a while. Um, we were basically billing hours, but we were waiting for another team to finish their part. We were still billing hours. My boss was yelling and screaming, we had to look busy. I was the guy that was in trouble. I was the guy that got pulled aside and yelled at, and my boss was upset because I was studying for the FRM. Yes, I was studying for risk management, the financial risk management designation. I was on task. We had colleagues that were like looking at ESPN and having a good time. But the thing is that they essentially were looking busy, but the managers I had were just mad. Essentially, you were getting ahead or you were working on their projects, even though they know you had the time to be working on your self-learning. If you work at a job where you don't have downtime at all, this blue line is your after hour work. So I understand it's stressful to have a job. It's stressful to be working you know, more than 40 hours a week and then coming home on top of that and then having to do all this self-training, self-education. But this is where it's headed. This is why I've been the best in most of the positions I've ever worked in is because I didn't stop and say, you know, you gave me this much responsibility, I'm gonna sit and do nothing right? I might even been paid at this low line and I'm actually working at some line that's way up here. I have multiple jobs. I'm working for multiple directors. I'm doing a ton of stuff and I should be compensated somewhere in this range, but it's not happening. But that's okay because behind the scenes, I have always been working on this blue line. And yes, sometimes it goes down and I lose some information or I waste some time or you have some setback, but the reality is you have to build your personal brand, you have to build your personal value. If you don't build this, no one else is gonna do it for you. And I really, really, really hate employees that stand here and try to claim that this system isn't fair. And I agree it's usually not fair, but typically the people that are complaining about this are the people that aren't actually doing the self-learning. So while I'm at work and I'm working on things, just to give you guys an idea what I do now, and a lot of this is like today on a Sunday on my weekends, I'm self-learning, I'm working on multiple projects. So as an example, like I'm pushing myself to go back through this book and the second book of this to help you guys out, to give you guys examples. This also makes me learn, it adds value, it reminds me of all these top skin skills that I haven't done so far. On top of that, I'm working on this book. This is Pattern Recognition and Machine Learning. Again, I am working hard. I am doing this in my free time because I want to learn more information. I want to add more value to my employers and I want to be ahead of everybody else. I'm not waiting for the company to tell me I need to do something. And then to top this third one off, I've spent over a year now, over a year actually working on a paper, an academic paper that adds value to the time series realm. It's something I've been frustrated with, I'm passionate about, and at the end of the day, I wanna make value here. I wanna make this you know, my thing, it's my hobby, it's my projects, but I'm looking at this as this is my personal value. I'm not gonna let a company tell me what my personal value is. I'm not gonna let a company you know, dictate when I do and don't, you know, kind of do this improvements. Like I have my own hours outside of work and I'm going to improve my skills even if I don't have time at work. So if you guys are looking to get ahead in your career, the number one rule is one, be patient, but learn to balance these two charts. You know, jump in here, kind of fight for your promotions, your title, but realize you're probably gonna be stuck on this step kind of pattern where it takes time to get promoted from one step to the next step to the next step. Um, and then on top of that, you know, you need to have these curves, whether it's this time series randomness or it's a nice smooth curve of 
some sorts. At the end of the day, you need to be working on improving yourself every day so that hopefully the value that you add to yourself and that you improve on yourself will help make sure that this green line, this corporate promotion scale matches with you. But you gotta realize every single day you are essentially improving yourself and it's your responsibility to do that. Anyways guys, that's my advice. You know, one, be patient. It does take time to get promoted. There are corporate policies. Even if managers, senior management sees that you're making waves, you're doing a lot of work, you just need to be patient. And I would recommend trying to stick it out at companies for a minimum of two years. Uh, this really gives you traction. This gives you time to kind of fall into your team, to learn your team, to learn the dynamics, and to really make an impact all the way up the chain, which will help push you towards the future. Um, but on top of that, instead of being patient, you also needed to be doing the work. I, as a, someone who's actually managed people, not in finance, but in the corporate realm of manufacturing and working in other areas, um, I can tell you when I manage people, the people that I want to promote, the people I want to help, it's not because they've been there for a few years, it's because that they've actually been doing that, that blue curve. They've been learning, they've been self-training, and that's kind of the takeaway from this is that you need to kind of balance your time between the two of make sure you get all your job done, everything you're required to do, but if you have downtime, sometimes it's not beneficial to take on extra projects for managers. It's more beneficial to do self-learning, and that can't be more true right now in a time where machine learning is taking off, um, quants essentially are like dying out. I know a lot of people disagree with me, but that being said, most of you probably haven't been working in the industry and like hands-on nitty gritty, like drilling into models and like forcing people to change things like I do. And so in that aspect, you see that people a lot of times fake this quant piece. But the point is, is that there's a lot of skills to be learned. There's a lot of stuff to learn. Um, even myself, like I am by no means considered like an optimal quant or anything. I'm still in this process. I'm still digging through these textbooks I've already learned, I've already been through, but trying to really understand that theory and the dynamics behind that because that helps me do a better job in my actual daily job. So that's kind of my advice, guys, for getting ahead and kind of balancing both, you know, the stagnant and the continuous improvements and learning how to do it all at once. So anyways, I hope you guys find this video helpful. If you do, don't forget to like and share and always subscribe below if you like this video because I will provide more content just like this next time. So, all right, thanks, guys. And as always, until next time. Thanks for watching my video. If you find it helpful, please like, share, and subscribe.